Good morning, it's Pete, Mind Wise Man's channel, aka Maverick Outdoors, and it's the beginning of December 2016 on an autumn winter morning with a view of the skeletal looking trees without their leaves at this time of year. Surrounded by a carpet of leaves. which whereby some have been cleared away to make the fire pit that was under the section of this tarp basher which incorporated a fire pit protector shelter as well. So basically I've got a nice practical space, a two-in-one sleeping section, admin, living section around the fire pit using an all-in-one tarp. So later on I'll show you the configuration of using the bungee cords that were relevant actually to this specific plastic tarp because the bungee cords have got give. So if there's a bit of breeze which actually started to kick up um, early this morning and it's carried on now and I think it's going to stay for the rest of the day. With all the swaying around of the breeze against the tarp it needs that little bit of springy give because the eyelets on these plastic tarps are not as strong as say the nylon looped stitched loops on a normal basher like the ones you've seen me use before in my wild camps. I set out in the canoe late yesterday afternoon and it was a really lovely mild afternoon there was no breeze the water was still like a sheet of glass there was no current to it on the Thames and uh, the sky was just starting to get a little bit dusky with sort of streaks of red and different tones of blue with the odd little bit of grey cloud so it was a really nice paddle to get here yesterday friendly sounds of the waterways. <laughs> yeah, as I said before, one of my favourite sounds. It just sort of encapsulates everything about being on the river, out in the canoe, especially my Maverick Explorer. So by the time I arrived here and then unloaded the canoe, brought everything to this spot, it was starting to get dark. So by the time I'd unpacked my shelter kit, uh, it was actually dark, so it was torch and head torch to actually do all the fixings and uh, set up my shelter for the night and for tonight and during the day tomorrow. In relation to the shelter that I was functioning under once I'd set it up last night, as you would have seen when I was preparing my food, I had the two meals, um, my little table was there, but I like to keep the space open sort of point of access, so I moved everything further under the shelter over there so everything was tidily out the way with my kit bag, the holder I've been using recently and then my water. was considering um, Millbank filtering the water but I th so, but I thought with the amount of water that I actually need for bit of washing and cooking I'd only need maybe about five six liters so instead of bringing separate bottles and loading them in the the hold all which would have made that heavier to maneuver that's why I brought the 10 litre jerry can but it only had about six liters in it so of course that's going to do me all the time I'm here I always carry it wherever I go I've got my mill back bag in there, so if that was the case and emergency, more water, I could filter it and then just boil it up in the saucepan, which is tidily placed over there. The vegetable dish that I cooked up um, in the 1.6 litre saucepan last night on the coals was vacuum packed uh, previously from home. It wasn't frozen, it was fresh, but I prepared it the night before leaving packed it with all the rest of my food in there which I'll show you what I'm going to have for breakfast in a moment. The fresh vegetable dish was all of these ingredients.
particular technique to use so that if you're adding nuts to, as I did pecan nuts with that vegetable dish, um, I wanted to keep them separate. I didn't want them to get wet and soak up some of the moisture whilst being in the vacuum bag with the veg, if that makes sense. So what I did, I put them in a separate little bag so they were sealed, also with chopped fresh coriander, put that in a separate bag and then put that in the bag with the vegetables. So of course the vegetable juices and the seasoning of the soy sauce, the honey, the garlic and ginger wasn't going to soak into the nuts and make them soft and those were the last things that I added just before the coriander and the pecan nuts just before the vegetable dish had finished cooking. Then I added the pre-cooked long life, I think the um, best before date on the pack of noodles is something like I think September 2017. So I put the noodles in with the vegetable dish as well for the carbohydrate and just to fill it up a bit. Also I did have a tin of skinned uh, boned mackerel fillet which was in tomato sauce um, but I decided not to add that because the vegetables and noodles were going to be filling enough so I think probably I'll add the uh, mackerel to a vegetable soup dish that I'm going to do later on. So those of you that follow my travels know I like to sort of vary the food but make it versatile whereas if you don't add a particular ingredient to something what's ever in your, your food bag you can then add it to something else so there's versatility. It was a surprisingly mild night last night compared to maybe a few weeks ago when I was here when the temperature was in single figures. I think it must be in double last night. Anything from about 9 to about 11 degrees. And I just slept under my two season sleeping bag with just my normal cargo trousers with no liners. But I have got some underliners to go underneath, say, cargo trousers so you can still utilise the pockets and the trousers can still function with a thermal liner underneath. That's a new acquisition I've got compared to maybe wearing softies. But I'll um, show you and tell you more about those later on. But yeah, I think because the weather was mild, during the majority of the day yesterday, where I was located and the journey to get here was uh, quite mild. It was sunny, there was about 20% cloud in the sky. You could sort of feel the mild warmth. If there'd been a wind, there'd probably be a bit, a bit of a chill factor. Uh, where you wouldn't have actually noticed the warmth of the sun. But um, yeah, it was quite sort of mild. Then the cloud cover that came over during the night, I think kept that sort of pressure of the warmth in that made it mild. Then of course the clouds started to clear very early this morning and about daybreak. And then of course it's still not started to get a little bit more chilly than what it was. So I'm actually feeling a little bit cooler than what I was yesterday. But in comparison to my trousers lower half with the upper half, you can see I've got my green sort of sniper type smock. It's based on the SAS sniper smock uh, with the multi pockets. Can undo from the bottom or it can undo from the top. So it's really good to get access to the trousers, lift this up. As you can see where I've done here, so I've got access to get to my trousers. Or you've got the other zip slightly above it, which obviously you can zip up to close it or zip down to open up as you can see here and here I've got my army British army issue it's known as a Chinese suit if you've got the trousers to match so if I had trousers on like this material this quilted material uh, the British military nicknamed it the Mandarin suit or the Chinese suit so I've got my Mandarin jacket on which actually hasn't got any collar but it's got three velcro sections which sort of seal it across really warm underneath this jacket so then at least I could have a jacket that was fully functional, again, being thermally clad underneath my upper half. And then the jacket on top had all the pockets where I kept all my utility items as I was potting around last night and as I will do for the rest of today and tomorrow. And paddling here yesterday during the day, all I had on was my uh, Norgi zip long sleeve, sort of thermal. It's mainly a sort of a cotton with a sort of uh, flecked effect on the inside for the insulation and then just a plain t-shirt underneath. So that was sort of my day wear yesterday. But then I thought, right, then I can make myself thermally clad with this liner and then zip this jacket up. And then this was really warm last night, very, very comfortable, even if it had gone down to sort of sub-zero. But once I've got the day on the go and something to eat, I think I'll disrobe my cargo trousers and then uh, go into this kit bag. And in this bag here, which is waterproof bag. Um, it had all my liners, my smock jacket, green jacket I'm wearing, 
the thermal under quilted jacket, Army Issue 1, that I'm wearing, and also the trousers, which I've yet to show you, which I think I'm going to put underneath my cargo trousers in a little while. So that was actually keeping it separate. As I said before, this, this um, holder has got a waterproof lining. You've seen it before if you've watched some of my recent videos. Great bit of kit I'm starting to use for the canoe more recently, um, with all my other bits and pieces. So basically everything, food, clothing, all sundries, uh, torches, bits of kit, fire lighting kit in the small pouches at the side, sleeping bag, everything was in this hole. And in this bag, which is Dutch Army issue, it's sort of got a waxed waterproof type lining, but this is issued for the Dutch Army to put their roll sleep mat in. But it's a great sturdy bag that I normally use to put my shelter kit. So there was that extra bag as well, shelter kit. And at my head end is the kit bag, which obviously there's less in it now, which carries the canoe seat, the paddles, the bolster seat that goes underneath to raise the seat up a little bit higher so it's ergonomically a better shape and position, for me anyway, my knees and hips. Uh, the inflatable pump, other bits and pieces are all relative to the canoe were in that bag, obviously transiting in the car before I go to put in and inflate the canoe and then go on my journeys. But of course now there's hardly anything in it, but I just used that at that end put the pillow on it and that was nice and comfortable for my head to rest. So what I'm going to do now is give me sleeping bag a bit of an air and just give it a bit of a shake out and then uh, fold it up and put it away and just get it out of the way and put it in my holdall. And then get all my day activity, cook kit, food, fire starter and the 533 common stove that I brought out because it tends to work much better than say gas butane stoves in the cold weather and that'll all come back and go back into my activity space back to normal just there. So now I've unloaded again my pouch belt. The green one um, houses my camera and then the Coyote Tam one has got my keys, wallet and mobile phone. Obviously I don't need my keys and wallet on my person while I'm actually pottering around here at camp. So everything else now is unloaded from here. So whilst I was asleep those items were in that belt pouch bag but now I've unloaded it. Put them back into the cargo pockets, phone, cameras torch, fire steel, all little sundries that you'd have hanging off of loops on your belt, that sort of thing, but now it's actually in the pockets of this jacket, which as I say is the purpose of why I wanted to wear this uh, these next few days with a liner underneath, so everything is all practical and all the kit is actually in my clothing itself. Compared to other circumstances where it is practical to have a, a belt loop, because it might be warm weather where you don't want to be all togged up, you've got a t-shirt on, not many pockets. So pouches attached to either a survival belt or a utility belt can be just as handy. Multi-mat, sleep mat, partially deflated, folded in half, can use that either to sit on or kneel on. But meanwhile I'm going to put on my knee pads because obviously I'm kneeling down now and I will be quite a lot whilst getting everything ready to reset up my admin space. So a couple of hours have passed. I actually just had a light breakfast, sort of sort of wheaty like breakfast biscuits and a brew. But I've now just set up my admin space sort of in front of the fire pit, albeit I'm not actually going to bring it to life just yet. So I'm actually central to my basher and the fire pit protector, which of course is now centrally above me. But I decided to sort of sit here because I'm not using the fire space. And now what I'm going to cook up is these would normally be baked in the oven. They're basically a slice of black pudding with a potato and onion rosti wrapped in bacon. And you can see there they are with a sachet of mustard, I think mustard and uh, pepper sauce, which is on the lower left hand corner, just in that plastic little sachet you can see there. And what you'd normally do, you'd roast these in the oven and then douche them with that sauce. The foil container they came in fitted into another one that I had spare just for sort of extra bits and pieces, always keeping foil lids. Although I don't like using foil for cooking, I only use it as a last resort. So in a situation like this, what I was going to do, you take the cling film plastic cover off and then put this spare tin on top of it and then sort of bury it in the coals to roast. 
but I think I'm going to save the fire for later on when I've got something else. I've got the uh, grill, which I'm just going to put onto the insert that I've actually made there for coals to fit underneath and grill some marinated belly pork steak that I've got later on. So what I've decided to do now is actually fry them up, all the contents of that in the 1.6 litre pan and uh, cook it on the 533 Coleman stove. Just simple, easy and then uh, eventually knock up a brew. So this is going to be my late afternoon brunch and then chill for a little while and listen to the rain that's pitter patting. It's supposed to have actually been heavier. It was forecast for this time, half past three, quarter to four to be actually heavier. Um, but so far I've missed it, but I think it's going to carry on till at least 11 or 12 o'clock tonight. Maybe that's when it'll kick in a bit heavier, but at least I'm protected. And if it does get really inclement, I can adjust the fastenings and actually bring my shelter down lower if the weather does kick. A pheasant has just decided to watch over me. You can see it in the centre there. Oh well, MRE on legs another time I suppose. And to go with it, some rye and sunflower seed bread, a brew and a bit of seasoning, salt, pepper and tomato sauce. And now you can see, it is now dark. Yeah. <laughs> okay, it might not look that appetising, but I've uh, had a little sample taste and it all tastes good. Tomato sauce and then the mustard pepper sauce that came with it. I heated up the tray it came in before I unloaded it out of the uh, 1.6 litre saucepan. And so at least the foil was warm. And then the one, the extra one that I brought just to insulate it underneath. So it's like a little tray dish plate. So I'm now going to eat that, mix it with the bread and I've got a brew on the go. Bon appetit. And now for the second course, dessert. MRE, army ration pack. Chocolate pudding and chocolate sauce. Bit of water in the foil tray that the black pudding, the bacon and the potato dish was in. Very, very low heat, so it doesn't actually scorch the package. But that should just heat up nicely. Just using a tin foil tray to just warm it up. Pot of custard, <laughs> one of my favourite regular things I take with me. And it just saves actually using, having to clean that out, then do the dessert. So just rip that open, mouthful of that and a mouthful of custard. Job done. Dessertville to the mat. It's now about half past eight in the evening and not long after I'd finished my meal, the uh, main course and the dessert, um, the wind and rain started to kick up and started to blow in sort of misty rain foot and head end. So what I've done now, um, not only have I put my thermal liners on under my trousers, which are these one, they're Czech Army issue. And I and they're really thermal underneath my trousers which means as I said earlier that I can um, use my trouser pockets with bits and pieces in them while I've got the thermal clad liner underneath. So I'm really sort of thermally togged up, really nice and warm but as I say I lowered the profile of the shelter. As you can see the apex is much lower now. And from one side bringing it back up there's a the ridge line and then taking it down to the other corner which of course makes the fire pit unusable isn't going to be a problem because I can use the 
common stove for any other cooking that I want to do. If it gets a bit milder later on a fancy a midnight feast then I might get the fire going but I've got plenty of wood left over even to store it. I was going to say for another rainy day. <laughs> if it really gets bad this head end, say the apex is coming up to the ridge, I might get the canoe and bring it across the head end. It's sort of diagonally across there but I'll probably bring it across this way to just block off this end if I really need to. As you can see, I've got enough room to sit up and the ridge line is only about sort of six, eight inches above my head. So, uh, you know, plenty of comfort. So if I do want to use the Coleman stove, I'm just sitting on the ground, just lean over, no problem to do any of my acquisitions I need to with that old little faithful cooker. So it goes without saying by lowering the ridge line gives less of a space either end for the breeze to blow in through that extra space. Uh, any sort of misty rain or even if it gets heavy rain it hasn't been it's just sort of very sort of showery light showery but it's been continual now. So when the ridge was higher in the original structure that I placed it um, this is where the rain was actually blowing into but now because obviously the ridge is now lower just enough for me to be able to sit up on ground level height um, if anything it will come to about maybe there and not infringe actually on my ground space but of course it was either end when there was that space higher for the wind to blow the rain into so it was actually coming in about sort of at least two to three foot enough to encroach on my feet and lower legs and also my head if I was lying down. Now if that had caught me out while I was asleep um, because I knew that the rain was forecast anyway especially from today onwards right through tonight would have even if it's not raining now I would have still lowered it so it didn't actually catch me out while I was asleep. Another contingency, again another last resort if I really needed to, instead of lying in length and in line with the ridge from one end of the ridge to the other I would consider maybe realigning and going along the length that way, obviously if the fire pit wasn't there. But worst comes to worst scenario I'd fill up the fire pit and then realign my ground sheet along this direction along here in comparison to how I'm swaying backwards and forwards here because obviously there's more distance from this side of the lower edge to the one that's where I'm sitting where you can see my kit bag is so the fact that I've actually lowered that edge gives me more floor space in comparison to when the ridge is higher it actually brings that edge along here closer in to where my footprint is but considering the forecast I think this will do me and I don't think the wind is going to actually get any worse but as I say last resort if I have to I'll just realign myself along this way in comparison to this direction which I've been since last night. So at the moment I'm wearing my through night head torch which I featured the last time I was here obviously the camera doesn't do it justice to how far I can see um, where I've just come down from the ridge line of the tarp but I've also acquired recently their little charging stick, the Through Night C2. And I was getting the alert to charge it. I've used it to take some photographs, done some social media pictures since I've been out over the past couple of days. Um, I keep my phone, I use my phone just for those reasons or emergency not to sort of phone every Tom, Dick and Harry because um, that's not why I come out in the great outdoors but I always want the phone for backup I think it's really important. Go in this pocket because it's not a massive great big charging unit and it stays close to my body all right so it's not thermal pocket but at least it's better to keep against me in my pocket whilst on me so I've got access to it plus as well it charges more effectively and you've seen me use this before the RAV power camping torch and charging unit so you've seen me use this a load of times before but I thought well I'm going to be using that to charge the phone if and when necessary because I've been using this last night and I will do a bit later on as my lantern and gives a really good ambient light when I hang it up from the ridge um, as I say the camera doesn't actually do it justice but it's a nice resonating light, it's really nice and equal, not like a sort of a beam of light, it just resonates sort of 360 degrees and you can close that section and then sort of have it as a torch 
as well. So yeah, good little unit. So I wanted this as my light source. Little button at the side, switches it off. Also, if you press it, you can see how much charge is left with those little blue lights. So that is still telling me there's about nearly half to two thirds of the power left. And I had this on last night, Krumsky, for a good four hours, at least four or five hours. And there's still about a third at least of the power left in it. So if I needed to, and I just thought I was out for the day, I might have this for light and then maybe recharge the phone. But I don't think these are made anymore. Also as outdoors enthusiasts and getting back to nature and doing this sort of activity, um, it's good to rely on not, not sort of loads of techno stuff, sort of glamping type kit, but it's good to have things for, you know, for safety. Um, you know, if there's an emergency and you need to use your phone, contact people as a last resort, then it's always great to have your phone with you. Keep it in a waterproof bag. I've got a little waterproof, just like um, the wet dry bags that I use in the canoe, a miniature one, small one that the phone can actually go in. But I don't spend all my time, um, you know, doing all the contacts via the internet because obviously that's not why I come outdoors. I like to share my activities. A lot of people are interested, it inspires them to get outdoors. Uh, I sometimes have a flashbulb idea while I'm out. I think, oh yeah, I could try something in a different way where I take the picture and then upload it and it helps other people if it gives them advice as well. So that's the main reason why I have the backup phone and also this new charge unit. Now I'm using the torch end of the lantern just to illuminate the head torch, the TH20, which is lightweight, got a very strong beam, it's got SOS. I did actually um, bring it to light, <laughs> excuse the pun, but I did actually feature it in a previous wild camp not long after I'd got it. Nice and compact, lightweight, uh, takes a AA battery. Admittedly the power is used um, quite quickly when it's on full beam, but the full beam, it really illuminates like a massive great sort of, I don't know, sort of a 500 LED torch or something like that, really impressive. But I've taken it down to a low light now, so it's just easy for me to see around me by about six foot radius. So that will save me a lot of power. So just featuring these two little bits of technical gizmo, because I'm always getting requests, um, inquiries over different bits and pieces that I acquire. So hence sharing some of the information because whatever makes things practical and safe and things that you can utilize outdoors then um, you know if it helps you get on your travels then you know that's all good stuff. It's now coming up to about 10.30 at night and the sky now has cleared there's a little chilly breeze in the air there's no clouds in the sky you can see the stars it's forecast now I think to be dry for the rest of the night and then be welcomed tomorrow morning by sunny weather even though the temperatures will probably be a bit dropped so from where I had the config well I've still got the config of the tarp low profile as you can see where I was underneath broad wide edged A shape I'm going to take it back up I think back to where it was but actually just have the part of the lean to so where my sleep quarters are, this bit of the tarp from the ridge line here going along, I think I'm going to cancel that and get all this part and fold it over the back so right above the fire pit which I'm now going to get going bit of warmth, bit of cooking will actually be clear so the smoke can go straight up because I think while I'm actually going to be getting the fire pit active and doing some food uh, there's going to be no rain so it's down to about, I'd say about three, four degrees compared to last night, which was about between nine to about 12. But uh, it's definitely got a bit more chilly. But as I say, it's forecast now for there to be no rain. I'll be prepared if there is any to quickly change the config again. But um, it's time now to get that fire pit brought to life. I've got some jacket potatoes, marinated belly pork steak, red pepper and mushrooms to cook 
for a bit of midnight feast on this three day canoe wild camp extravaganza. <laughs> Welcome to my world people. Outdoorsy to the max. Fire pit nice and glowing with some decent chunks of wood, sort of third and fourth stage wood really. Then when they turn into coals there'll be nice big chunks to cook the food efficiently. Bigger coals obviously last for longer. So once you put them in position, ready to bake, roast or heat up your saucepan or whatever. Then if they're small coals you just got to keep brushing loads of coals over and just keep repeating it. But the bigger the coals, once the wood's burnt through, the longer they stay cooking your food without having to replace or replenish them. So I've got the fire going with some cotton wool and Vaseline. Used a little bit more of the dry hawthorn deadwood, which really takes, it doesn't burn very long, but you get some decent chunky bits and it really gets the fire going well. My usual little trick of the fire pit earth mounted up at the back there with just a couple of logs. The food, I brought the mushrooms in a protective sort of sealed box because I didn't want them to get crushed. There's two of them in there, big ones. And some foil to wrap them in, two potatoes, sweet red pepper, which I'd actually put in the green bag, but that was quite protected because nothing was really going to be on top to squash that red pepper. So the method to me madness with that and the pork belly steak, which basically has been marinated with honey, soy sauce, garlic and ginger. Uh, I think I'll put a touch of maple syrup in there as well. And uh, froze it. Took it out of the freezer, last thing that I packed as I normally do with food, especially meat. Food that can perish, I mean in this sort of weather in the cold it's going to be, as I've mentioned many times before, as if it's been left in a larder where food would keep for a good few days. But I mean that's still cool to touch, I kept it in the bottom of that food bag which has been in contact with the ground, so it's kept it at a nice constant cool temperature so it's not going to perish. But so I took that out of the freezer just before I left to come out for these three days. So ready now to get some of this food to cook in that roaring fire when it just dies down a bit and I've got a few more coals. And I'm sitting about four foot away from the fire. Really nice and warm. Getting a dual effect, warmth and comfort. And of course ready to cook the food. Priceless night. And as I say, the sky's cleared, can see the stars. And it should remain like this for the rest of nighttime hours. I'll repeat it again, I always say it, I say I only use foil, aluminium foil as a last resort. Uh, you know, a lot of sort of health scares, whatever your thoughts are on that. I personally prefer to use stainless steel. Bits of equipment, you know, for cooking and what have you. But I'll use aluminium foil very, very seldom because of course it's the most practical thing to do something like this. The two jacket potatoes there are just sort of like rolled up. Here I've got a little bit, sometimes if the red pepper's got a stalk you can have that sticking out and actually have it as a handle to sort of move it in and out of the coals. As far as the mushrooms you can see I've folded them with a little bit, sort of a handle bit if you want to call it that at the top. So I'll place those on the coals, they're not going to be moved around and then once I've got my heavy duty gloves on to protect my hands I can lift both of them up as you can see there. So just a little tip there, if ever you're going to coal roast the mushrooms or any vegetables similar. But now you can see the flames have died down, plenty of nice big coals in there to now get the food on the go. So the grill's placed on the recess with the coals underneath, with the meat on top. Then you can see somewhere, sort of right in there where there's a bit of silver reflection of the two jacket potatoes that were in some coals and a little bit of flame, but so the heat actually surrounds around the top surface of the foil covered potatoes and it gets sort of a equal heat all the way round because those bits of wood that I've now just put on top 
will start to catch light so we get a sort of a overall radiation of heat all the way round rather than have to turn them over. I might have to turn them over or sort of turn them round a couple of times but because I've been able to control the fire really easily and it's not been smoking and what have you and it's really good fuel wood it's enabled me to really get the most out of the effect of the fire and actually cooking with it. But once I can sort of time it, the potatoes take about 45-50 minutes that size and the heat that I know that's surrounding them now. But when that stuff that's on the fire is about halfway through cooking I'll then place the red pepper and mushrooms on so by the time everything's cooked those won't all be shriveled up and burnt and the timing of it, everything should be cooked round about the same sort of give or take a few minutes. And as far as the sort of heavy duty knife as such that I've been using, I knew I wasn't going to be doing any crafting over the weekend, so I just brought my Mora 510 to sort of cut and open some of the packaging um, and anything else that just needs a bit more heavy duty cutting than actually using my eating knife, fork and spoon knife. And it's kept in the Mora 510 sheath that it comes with, but I've modified it because the sort of belt loop is a really sort of strange, sort of you can just about put a thin bit of string through it. So what I did, I sort of got a key ring, double ring spring loop, and then a carabiner to hang it off my belt loop, or I can actually stick it on a kit uh, pouch belt. But just this weekend, I've just kept it on my trouser belt loop on the waist of my trousers but modified it with some gaffer tape some paracord and also two bits of rubber bicycle in the tube so it will last resort if I did need to use any of this for any emergency if I was somewhere where I didn't have my shelter kit and all that sort of stuff so you can modify it never used it but a couple of times I've nearly had to so it's always good and again it doesn't add too much weight to it but a sort of a three-in-one device, cutting, fastening and uh, fire starting with the bicycle inner tube which you can also cut bits off and make elastic bands with or to sort of fasten things so yeah, versatile little knife and modification to the sheath which is really all I've needed this weekend so now you can see once the flames have died down just next to the grill with the meat. Plenty of coals there to just put the pepper and the two mushrooms whilst to the right hand side the jacket potatoes are being overall cooked. Top bottom side to side end to end. Got about another 10 and 15 minutes to go. I specifically didn't bring a plate or anything to eat off of because I was either going to be eating out of the MRE packs. I've got breakfast tomorrow, which is an all-day vegetarian breakfast, which I just happen to have, so I'll just boil that in water tomorrow, actually in the saucepan. But the foil tray there is going to now be used for a third time. First of all, it actually held the black pudding meal, frosty potato and the bacon with the mustard sauce earlier, which obviously that was the foil that it came in. Then um, once I'd sort of roasted that up, obviously ate out of that, then rinsed it out or just wiped it over, then put some water in it and heated up the chocolate pudding. And just by default, that's sanitised the aluminium foil tray there. So I'll eventually serve once all that food's cooked in that foil tray. And voila, sweet red pepper, mushroom, marinated pork, belly, steak, jacket potatoes with obligatory butter. All ready to stick on the, literally, stick table, stick it on there and uh, delicately cut into it. 
and I think that table will just about support it so I can eat comfortably as if I'm sitting at a dining table. <laughs> Dinner is now served. I've let the fire die down and sort of extinguish itself. So by tomorrow morning it'll be much cooler than I'll douche it with water from the river and leave no trace, fill the fire pit back in. And uh, getting the old faithful 533 to do a late night brew. So I don't have to use a fire anymore. If I was staying here for longer, then I probably would have um, utilised the fire pit for sure with the coals. But as it's getting a bit late now, I thought I'd just let it die down. It's going to be an easier job tomorrow. So, the brew box that you've seen before enables me to put oh, a good two, three days worth of sugar, tea bags and three-in-one coffees. But you'll notice that spoon was an old spork. And you can see the end on the left was where the fork and the serrated edge of one of the prongs of the fork was, but it broke. But it's just the right size to uh, fit in my brew box. So that worked out okay. Sometimes teaspoons can be a little bit too big. Um, but that virtually fits in even a smaller brew box that I've got. So that's the practicality of that. So I'm now just going to fill up that mug. And uh, before I settle for the night, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to store that wood away safe and sound, keeping it dry somewhere, ready for a next visit. And of course, got to have a biscuit box, got to dunk some biscuits in the brew, or have a little bit of a sweet tooth nibble. But that's what I'm going to have there. Uh, chocolate covered sort of digestive biscuit and then there's sort of breakfast type um, all wheat biscuits with a type of chocolate hazelnut centre to them so that'll do for me dessert well kettle's boiling nice one ready for a brew and bit and something else that I've started to do a bit more recently over the past I don't know six twelve months taken powdered milk yeah that's great but if you've got the space and you've got um, the sort of facilities to take sort of cartoned milk or long life milk, that sort of thing, because obviously it does taste better than powdered milk. But powdered milk, I mean, I've used it and I still will do, very convenient, because it can all just fit in one container as long as you've got water to source. Then, um, you know, you've got your whole brew kit and just take the water. But there is the tinned milk, evaporated tin milk, long life. Once I've um, poured out the first portion and opened up the tin, then decant it. You've seen that loads of times, but this is something I'm actually going to do more regular, especially when I can carry the half litre, 500 millilitres of evaporated milk, because it just tastes better, especially in coffee and especially in tea. So I'm ready to settle for the night. Fire's really died down. I'm going to keep the tarp elevated and uh, see how it goes for the evening, should be okay. So there's a very chill, light chill breeze but there's nothing that's really moving the tarp around so I'm going to keep my sleeping end on the slant but again if the weather does get bad which is odds on it isn't but if it does I'll just Low the profile, but north facing. Is the moon. Brightly shining. So I'm going to settle for the night. And catch you in the morning.
It's about nine o'clock in the morning now, and it's a nice, clear, fresh, sunny day. As you can see, I zipped myself up fully in the uh, two season tropical army sleeping bag. Obviously, it's got a drawstring hood and sort of just encased that over a little bit. Um, that was about daybreak, about half past six, getting on to about seven o'clock, when I just stirred a little bit and uh, it wasn't really. Uh, sort of freezing cold, but I thought, oh, what I do, I'll just zip myself up, just insulate a little bit, just in case the cold then does wake me up again, so I thought I'll have a few more hours kit. But of course, noticed that I had a few visitors with some pheasant, and um, when you get used to nature in the outdoors, sometimes you can sort of feel a presence of something. I didn't think anyone was around, although I heard some very early morning paddlers, um, which I heard a noise in the distance. And any environment that you're used to, you just get used to the sights and sounds. And I thought, that sounds like someone paddling this time of day. And it's not quite daybreak yet. It's still sort of getting sort of dusky early morning. And so I looked out on the river and it was quite misty. And lo and behold, yeah, it was a K2, two paddlers in a kayak paddling by just before daybreak. And then, of course, a little bit after that was when I got a visit by the little bit of wildlife pheasants. <laughs> MRE on leg and of course was able to leave the config of the tarp as it was the lean-to slant that I'm actually laying under now to the elevated section which was for the fire pit so I didn't have to change that during the night because it stayed mild although the temperature dropped um, I didn't have to change the config there was no rain there was no wind which of course is the beauty of using a tarp. Many times I've sort of had inquiries, oh, you know, why do you use a tarp? Why not use a tent? Yeah, tent has its uses for sure. Regardless of the weather, being out in nature, the beauty of the tarp enables you to see the beauty of nature and, you know, why you're outdoors in the first place. Being able to see it, even when you do have to stay sheltered, and especially like a day like today, especially after yesterday when there was the wind, the rain, being welcome to <laughs> the sound of private planes, that's a good sign. They'd have monitored the weather, knowing that it's going to be safe and easy to go flying around today. So, um, OK, so it's the sound of the aircraft, but for me it's an indication in this area that I'm used to that um, it's probably going to stay like this for the rest of the day anyway. So now I'm going to unzip and disrobe from my sleeping bag and get some of my cook kit over here and make my breakfast. And before I kick off the morning, just a quick freshen up with some wet wipes around my face, around my neck, my hands, just all accessible parts of the body without having to derobe my clothing, just to freshen up. Breakfast system all ready to go. So I'll be heating up some water in the saucepan, ready to put in this vegetarian all day breakfast. And I've got a jacket potato left over from last night. I'm going to scoop out the potato, just discard the skin. It's edible, but I just want to discard it. And once this is heated through, open up the bag, then put the um, scooped potato in this, leave it in the water for a little bit longer so it all heats through, and then that's my breakfast with a brew. So for the fixings of this near 12 by 8 tarp, you can see the front corner here was bungeed to that tree, and then the other side was bungeed to that tree, so that's the outside upper edge. Then the centre line that creates the slight fold for it to tilt down into my sleeping space there. One side of the centre line fixed to that. And this other side of the centre line fixed on a few bungees going along all the way up to just there. Then going down from the centre line to this bottom corner, which was the part of the lean-to of my sleep area, was bungeed just there. And the other side was bungeed to that tree, which has got a lot of vine. And I was able to put the hook of the bungee from that corner around the tree, and then just hooked on to a bit of vine just there. So that held it in a good position. And so I could keep the centre line virtually parallel with the outer edge of the fire pit shelter 
you can see just there is a clip-on whereby the bungee goes right the way along and fixes onto my sectional pole just there which then goes down obviously to the ground and is nice and stable and literally to keep the stability of that sectional pole bungee cord coming down at an angle and then just there hooked into some vine and that keeps it secure so as I walk underneath my admin space and fire pit shelter you can see the inside line of the centre line allows me to sort of stand, it's above my head. And by having that sectional pole at the rear, keeps this centre point of the centre, what would be ridge line if you want to think of it like that, sort of upright so it's got a better shape so there's, there would be no sagging down. Although there was a little bit of pooling of water on the centre here, I actually bridged with my canoe paddle bridged it up from the ground so that it's elevated to about this point so if you imagine this sort of went up a little bit higher which in turn enabled any fall of the water to go down the back end but for the majority of the inclement weather um, I was able to just keep it literally as a configuration you've just seen now at my head end of the sleeping space lean-to you can see there's some sort of like stationary clips there where I actually folded over where I had the green tarp hanging down the six foot by three foot. So it's about three foot wide and you can see the clips which I folded over, well I folded over the edge of the tarp shall I say, over the green six by three. As it draped all the way down and was clipped in place but obviously you've got to fold it over, otherwise if you fold it the other way you'll get water ingress and obviously it was going to drip in. I'll just show you my clothing layer system, the multi-pocket smock, which has got two way zip, either downwards, back up, or at the bottom here, which then gives you access, a few Velcro tabs, to actually get into whatever's actually underneath your jacket, which in turn, of course, is the mandarin jacket, collarless, hence wearing the Norgi shirt with a high collar zipped up. And then underneath here, the trousers, trouser liners, the Czech army issue trouser liners. Padded, quilted liners, really good, button fly, does up round the waist with a tie cord that goes all the way round the waist. Very high waisted as well, which is really good for tucking uh, clothing in. And I got these from eBay, really fantastic dealer, this is as far as I'm going, as far as derobing. Normal underwear. <laughs> and I got them from a company called K-Bar, K-A asterisk star bar, based on eBay. Really great trader, um, where I got the liners from. Compared to recent wild camps where I've had the German army issue parka liner which is sort of quilted similar to this but again it's got the same zip system as this can go up or down open it from the hem end or open it from the top end with a double ended zip um, that thermal liner is safe for a german army issue to go underneath a german parka smock jacket but of course it's only got a couple of po it's only got the sort of say the single pocket and i was going to uh, modify a couple of pockets on it so I thought this time what I'd do is to make sure I've got high collar, thermal, long sleeve liner, the British Armoury issue one. And as I said before, it then enables me to have access to all my stuff like camera, stills camera, phone, uh, torches, cigarette lighter in the little shoulder pouch, AA batteries to uh, go in my torches so that everything is accessible on me instead of maybe wearing a pouch belt with lots of things hanging off of it. I did have a Memora 510 knife actually hanging off of my belt loop on my trousers so that worked out okay so basically that's the method to my clothing layer system for this weekend especially as the cooler weather although it's a lovely day um, today on the Sunday especially for the cooler weather and being more practical with assessing the layer system you're going to use when you're outdoors it's also got a couple of zipper pockets internal ones that go behind this pouch buttoned pocket with a flap here just behind it and this is normally known as a map pocket they're both the same either side really big space 
to put things in if you need to. And also there's two internal pockets either side, Velcro fastened at the top. So just this multi-pocket jacket is really practical, especially for what I want to do uh, this weekend. If I'd have had to do any activities from under my shelter and it had been raining or wet weather, then I'd have uh, taken this jacket off probably, taken my kit out of the pockets as explained, and then put them back into a belt pouch. Put that round my waist with all the bits and pieces I needed, either carabinered, different items onto the belt or the loops of my trousers, and then put my waterproof jacket on with my waterproof trousers. But if someone were to make an absolute waterproof version of one of these jackets, whether Gore-Tex, tape seams, everything waterproof, I've never come across one. It's the Czech Army quilted trouser liners, thermal liners, um, was really good. There were some inquiries I had to make whereby he went beyond the call with uh, following up my inquiry more than I expected. So he's got other kit, um, sort of specialist kit, he's got other types of thermal liners, all army surplus, the majority of the stuff is all unissued, brand new, and obviously it's been stored for a long time. I think these liners that I'm wearing underneath my cargo trousers now must have been stored about maybe 20 odd, 30 odd years I think, but you'd think they'd just come out of the manufacturer yesterday. Really good quality, and I'll give you the contact details, and also the link to his trading section on eBay, on the description box below of this video. Mainly because I'm always getting requests from people about certain specific items, unusual bits of kit that I might get, that people haven't come across very often. As far as this green smock that I'm wearing, uh, they're quite hard to come across actually. There's been a couple of companies that are copying the design, which was the army issue, and it was based on the SAS sniper jacket. Um, the original ones had padded elbows on the arms just across the elbow because of course you know if you're sniping and using firearms in the military you're probably going to be lying down and you need a comfortable position padding in certain areas of your clothing besides knee pads so of course if you're upper clothing you need elbow pads um, but this one is just a basic copy of a company that does actually make them for the British military uh, but more of just general duty uh, utility jacket and they're not very often uh, on the market. So I got this one from eBay, I think it was about something like 30, 32, 33 pound, and there was only about half a dozen. I was lucky enough to get one in my size, also big enough to actually have some of the sort of thermal lining under it, but without being over baggy. So it was just right for my use and purposes. I've also had inquiries about this little contraption here, my canoe trolley. What I'm going to do now is LNT process, pack away the kit and then go for a little paddle before it gets dark in the sunlight and the blue sky. So it's now coming up to about 3 o'clock in the afternoon. Still very, very mild, lovely blue sky. Tiny little bit of cloud. The sun's over there, creeping into the west. And I'm going to be paddling off into it. The water looks nice and mild. So it's going to be a nice calm paddle back. And then to finish off walking over the LNT, leave no trace. Nice and clear. Leave it as it was found. And because now the weather's mild, I've got about an hour's paddle back. Take my jacket off, empty the pockets, filled back up my pouches on my pouch belt as I've packed away my thermals, <laughs> my jacket, and just put my waterproofs over my cargo trousers now. So if there's any splashback from the paddles, then uh, it just keeps my trousers dry. Canoe now loaded and ready to shoot the Maverick Explorer in for the journey home. 
Also hoped you deem some interest from my practicalities of the clothing that I was wearing specifically for this weekend, the thermal layers. Some of the kit also that I featured, hopefully will give you some ideas. The cooking as well, from the elaborate cooking on the campfire to simple MREs. As always, thanks for watching, really appreciate your interest and catch you in another video soon.